place where Harry Potter came to life. It's where the majority of the books were written. So this afternoon, I'll be taking you guys to some of the places that inspired characters and locations within the books. Today, we're heading to Glenfinnan, Scotland. And what we're gonna see there is... A surprise. A surprise. You'll find out when we get there. After exploring Glenfinnan, we're gonna make our way over to Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a long day in the car, yeah. but should be fun. of our little surprise activity and you want me to tell you what it is okay we're gonna see the train the Hogwarts Express go by on the bridge that it's on in the film like that classic scene you know where it's going by on that gorgeous arched bridge we're here where that was filmed where the train goes by it comes by twice a day and we're gonna hike up this little trail to get a better viewpoint of it we're at the Glen Finnan Viaduct. You can Google it. There's lots of instructions about how to see it, but that's what we're gonna go do. Well, let's go find it. We're doing our best to avoid all the mud. She's cleaning the boots. Got a little muddy. All right, we finally made it to the Glenfinnan Viaduct here. Um, as Ashley mentioned, this viaduct is famous for the scenes in Harry Potter. Now, if you wanna catch this, it comes through twice at this viaduct, one in the morning, one in the evening, and it changes during the seasons. I think right now, it's supposed to come in about 10.45 a.m. And then the afternoon service, I think it passes through around 3 p.m. on the way back, and then some other times as well. Just waiting. In the rain. In the rain. 30 minutes on a rock. Now we got a good half hour. What is it, 1040? 1040, 1045. Less than half an hour. The umbrella is only big enough for really one person. And it actually looks so cute on the rock. I'm gonna go stand under the actual viaduct. Bye bye. Thank you. Love you. I don't think I can talk about it, but I was watching it and I started reading those books when I was in the fifth grade. And so I was just thinking about that little fifth grader and how cool she would think this was. <laughs> Is that dumb? It's a little dumb. She'd be happy. Back to the car after watching the Hogwarts Express go by. Yeah, it was awesome. Totally worth it. If you get here early, which we did, we probably got here 50 minutes to an hour early. Yeah. It wasn't any problem. We parked in this little parking mm -hmm. lot just past the visitor center. It was free. You mm -hmm. got out. There's a paved road. Follow the paved road. You'll see it and wait. And that's it. Yeah. 
No, we went up a little hike. It was kind of, it was rainy and muddy. You don't have to do that hike. You can stay on the paved path and then take a left, right. When you, you'll see signs, basically. Don't go hiking. No, you don't need to. You don't need to take your new winter boots through the mud where they don't belong. That was my fault. Oops. Oops. But now we're going to go find somewhere to grab a coffee and then search out a uh, lunch spot nearby. Yeah. There was only one place in Glenfinnan to stop and grab lunch or coffee. So we decided to come to the next town over called Fort William. And it's a really charming little town. So we're going to stop and grab some lunch real quick. After lunch, which was great by the way, we are back in the car. We're going to drive about 10 minutes down the road to go on a little safari of sorts. We are on the hunt for some coos. <laughs> Coo is Scots for cow. We really want to find those furry kind of auburn cows that you think of when you think of Scotland. Apparently they're all around the highlands. I really want to see one. So we're going to go, the internet has told us a few places to look for them. We're going to go see if we can find some. We're not gonna see, we are gonna oh, see him. He's confident, he's confident. After like 30 minutes of driving on this very narrow road back in this, I don't know, thousand acre farm, we finally found some Halen Cools. They're so cute and fluffy. These ones don't have especially long hair. I really want to find some that like have the real, real long hair. I think the males look like that and the females look like this, but they just look like really fluffy cows. They're cute. our time here in the highlands in the northwest of scotland and now we're gonna stay for a couple of nights in edinburgh yeah on the way there we have a few hours on the road and we're gonna take a few detours to see if we can find some more of those coos <laughs> but if not we're just gonna head straight on into edinburgh where we're gonna be for three nights i think just drove through Glencoe, Scotland on our way to Edinburgh and we had to stop on this route. It is stunning. It's incredible here. Breathtaking, truly. Yeah. The most gorgeous valley with streams and waterfalls yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. Just falling off of the mountain. It's beautiful. Check this out.
Like seriously, like I was beginning to think they were the equivalent of like unicorns here in Scotland. Like you could not find them, they're so elusive. We were talking to a Scottish person at a cafe <laughs> like halfway through our drive, we pulled over to get some coffee. And we were like, this is silly, but like, where can you find the cows? And he goes, just anywhere in the fields. He talked about right. it as if it's like, they're just everywhere. And like, they are not just everywhere. <laughs> At least not right now. But we saw some, <laughs> so check, check. We're, we're hoping to see more though. We're hoping, but I think that was our chance and that was it. That might be it. I think that was it. I'm tired, honestly, and I'm ready to be at our, uh, next airbnb in edinburgh yeah about, got about an hour and a half so we're gonna get back to it but we just wanted to let you know we were successful in our endeavors see you on edinburgh Finally arrived here in Edinburgh after a long, long two days of driving. Um, we're gonna get settled into our Airbnb, get some sleep, first grab some dinner, and then I guess explore Edinburgh. Y'all, this is it, and this is Jordan. <laughs> He's over it. Over it, I need some sleeps. We're looking forward to getting refreshed and then exploring the town. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to exploring Edinburgh for sure. Yeah, let's go chill. Yeah, okay. night night. Night night. So it's been two days since you last saw us. Last you saw, we were arriving into Edinburgh, getting settled into our Airbnb. It is two days later. We took yesterday off to do a little admin day. We needed to get some things booked for upcoming trips. But anyway, we are starting a very full day of touristy things. The very first stop is what's behind me, Edinburgh Castle. We're going to hit up Holyrood House, the palace, which is the queen's official residence when she's here in Edinburgh. We're going to do the Royal Mile. We're going to do a Harry Potter walking tour and a few other stops along the way. It's going to be a packed day and we are really pumped that you're coming with us. This is a huge complex. I honestly don't know where to start first. There's like small museums within here. There's the castle itself. There's like stuff about the Royal Guard. There's a lot to see. here is really beautiful and it's got to be one of the best views of Edinburgh, Scotland here. Um, but a couple of things. One, it is really, really, really crowded. I think part of it's because of the big tour buses. I mean, there's just a lot of people here. And so it's kind of hard to really experience a lot of what the castle has to offer um, peacefully. Um, also, the other thing is, if you notice, we went to walk in a bunch of different rooms, but there's no filming or photography allowed. And so we couldn't capture a lot of the things like where the crown and the sword are or the war memorial. So there's quite a few things here that you won't find on video. I thought it was crowded when we first got here. That was obviously nothing. <laughs>
Okay, we just wrapped up exploring the castle, so now we're gonna go get some water and coffee at a neat little coffee shop that we found, and then after that, we're gonna go on a walking tour, which Ashley mentioned, the Harry Potter walking tour. And also, if you notice all the crowds around me, we learned that we're here probably during one of the busiest months in Edinburgh period throughout the year. It is what's known as a fringe fest. There's arts, music festivals, there's comedy shows, anything and everything you think of around the arts is happening. So it is packed. But now we're gonna get some coffee. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, witches and wizards, muggles and nerds, please delete as appropriate. Welcome to Edinburgh, welcome to the Potter Trail. As I said, my name is Richard, I'll be your tour guide for this afternoon. Now, Edinburgh is the place where Harry Potter came to life. It's where the majority of the books were written, and it seems like almost every single aspect of this city has somehow made its way into the spellbinding books. So this afternoon, I'll be taking you guys to some of the places that inspired characters and locations within the books. I'll be taking you to some of JK Rowling's old haunts, and also telling you a little bit about the real life witches and wizards of Old Riki. <laughs> maybe explain for anyone who is concerned walking behind me today, I am wearing a rucksack, not some sort of disfiguring hump. Just want to get those questions out of the way now. Uh, so, uh, there is going to be one more potential use for these wands that I've given you today. We are going to have a bit of a house point competition along the way of today's tour. So if you are unsure about which house you belong to, maybe the colour of your wand can dictate that for you. We do have red for Gryffindor, blue for Ravenclaw, green for Slytherin, and Hufflepuffs can sort of make their own mind up. Uh, so, first question in this house point competition is going to be now. This one relates to where we are. So I'm going to give a quote from one of the books. If anyone can tell me which book it is from, you'll get 10 house points for your respective house. Clue, it's one of the Harry Potter books. Um, anyway, this is the quote. <clears throat> they had left the Hogwarts grounds completely. It was clear they had travelled miles, perhaps hundreds of miles, for now even the mountains behind the castle were gone. They were standing instead in a dark and overgrown graveyard. The black outline of a small church was visible in the background. Go ahead. Very good. Ten house points to which house? Slytherin, excellent. That was indeed from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the scene where Harry first meets Voldemort in the flesh and is forced into a terrifying duel at the end of the Triwizard Tournament. Now, I think you might agree with me in thinking this could have indeed been the graveyard that inspired that terrifying scene. J.K. Rowling did definitely spend quite a lot of time here, as we'll soon find out. We'll be seeing some very interesting names on gravestones coming up very soon as well. We have arrived at the grave of Mr. Thomas Riddle, which seems to be the inspiration for Tom Riddle, aka Voldemort from the books. But there is a bit of a spelling difference here. This is Riddle spelled D-E-L-L. -L. JK Rowling changed that spelling to spell D. L E in the books. Can anyone think for another 10 house points why she wanted to change that spelling? Yeah, yeah, very good. 10 house points to which house? Ravenclaw, lovely. Uh, so that's true, you might know in the second book when Harry first meets Tom Riddle, he spells his name out in the air, spells Tom Marvolo Riddle, and rearranges those letters to form I am Lord Voldemort. My thinking maybe that anagram wouldn't quite work if you had the extra L in the name there. I don't think I am Lord Voldemort is quite as scary. <laughs> So 
just behind me is the school. It's still a school today, the actual school building that inspired the design of Hogwarts. JK was said to have had a sketch that she originally imagined the school as, and it looked pretty much just like this with four turrets representing the four houses. This school actually still has four houses and they apparently have the same colors as the Hogwarts houses. Really neat. You will see in the window there is a massive plaque claiming it is the birthplace of Harry Potter. There are very important inverted commas around that word birthplace that I can confirm are there for a very good reason. Uh, there is no way the Elephant House could be the literal birthplace of Harry Potter as it only opened in 1995, uh, which you might know is after she finished writing that last uh, first book even. Um, but uh, she'd maybe say it's not complete lies. J.K. Rowling did definitely write quite a lot of Harry Potter in the Elephant House. Uh, she wrote much of books two, three, and four there. Uh, there is video and photographic proof of this. If you go to their website, you can see a very nice interview with J.K. Rowling at the back of the cafe itself. But uh, it is clear to say the Elephant House has perhaps um, made a bit of money out of the whole thing. Okay, so welcome to the real life Diagon Alley, or uh, Victoria Street, as it's more commonly known to muggles. Okay, so we just had a quick lunch at a place called Paradise Palms, which we totally recommend. But we wanted to give a quick thought on the Potter Trail walking tour. So the Potter Trail walking tour is a free walking tour, all things Harry Potter. I have to admit, I didn't really realize how integral the city of Edinburgh is to Harry Potter's, like, J.K. Rowling's making of the Harry Potter stories. Anyway, the tour is free, it's tips only. We highly recommend. If you are into those stories, the movies, anything, even if you're really not, Jordan had a great time and he's only seen a few of the movies. So much fun, they do such a great job, and it was a pretty large tour group. I think they had about 30 people. They had even more than that, and they had to get an extra guy. Moral of the story, definitely do it. It's free, it's just tips, so we paid like 10 pounds. Awesome, totally do it, it was super fun. There are so many hot spots around town that relate to the history of the writing of those books. So much fun. Yo, I am pumped. We are doing a semi-private evening tour of the Playroom Palace. So this is the Queen's official residence here in Scotland. She, we just missed her. She was here at the beginning of July, I believe. She comes every summer. We're not allowed to take too much video inside, so we just want to say we're about to go in for our... It's supposed to be a group of 30, but it's only like five of us. Semi-private tour of her palace here, and I am pumped. Let's go. We just had the best time. I'm sorry y'all couldn't come along for most of it. They're pretty strict on filming and photography, but it was such a great time. We honestly so spoiled. Like we just decided to splurge on this. The It's not a private tour. It's just a very small group. They say it could be up to 30. It was only five, like I mentioned before. So it felt super intimate. We got so much good information. You get to go places that you don't normally get to go. Hold on. Anyway. Touring Holyrood House Palace, Holyrood House Palace, I think is the name of it, was so much fun. If you have the resources to do the evening tour, I recommend it. They even ended with a glass of legit champagne. So much fun. Place is beautiful. You really feel like you could be a guest of the Queen because there's nobody around and you're just getting to walk through empty. So much fun. I I just love that kind of stuff and I highly recommend it. We also got presents. All right, we're gonna go and grab some pho for dinner real quick. And then, unfortunately, that's gonna wrap up our time here in Edinburgh before we head out tomorrow to Durham, England. Good night. We're gonna do the Royal Mile. We're gonna get some lunch. We're gonna do a Harry Potter tour. It's going to be a day. We're really pumped. Here's a car. Please hold. We're in. Monsieur Alvin, would you do me the courtesy of speaking?